So, so this case really is about people wanting to, like, I need, I want to be able to apply under the first system and not the point system. Is that correct? So, I can give you some general information about the class action, okay? Uh, you know, taken on by our law firm, been initiated uh, against the Attorney General of Canada, and this is on behalf of all individuals who have applications for Halibut band membership were rejected due to that 2013 agreement that was put in place. So that's the point system. They don't want to use the point system no more. It was like 92% of the people that applied had gotten exactly. approved, you know, right? You, yes, I was going to say, you, you know this information. So that's exactly the application process in 20, 2008. Um, you know, there was 92% of approved applications. Then in 2013, Canada entered into that 2013 agreement. And it's alleged that the 2013 agreement unfairly and retroactively changed the criteria to become a member. Okay. So, um, I'm, I, okay, here's my position. Okay, I grew up in Newfoundland, and I am a 60 scoop survivor. Do you know who those people are? Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay, and also my mother is a residential school survivor, but she's passed on. Okay. Okay, I'm calling you because I grew up in Newfoundland. I'm a visibly very native woman. Okay. I didn't see any Newfies like that. No, but no, and none of these Halapoos look like me. And what I'm telling you is, these are not native people. And the indigenous community is livid that the federal government made a deal with these people behind our backs. Right, right. And you know, to, to add to that, this is really, you know, this is where this class action comes in, where, you know, it's alleging that Canada, um, you know, it, it was an unfair agreement and it unfairly changed the criteria to become a member and what proof to, to, uh, be okay. Also, seven and ninety-two percent approval tells me that they were not vetting people that they actually had indigenous ancestry because there's no way all those white newfies has significant Mi'kmaq blood to where they could say I'm a Mi'kmaq person. They are not. And I, how do I go and present to the judge about this as somebody who's a real native woman and I got a voice? to say something and I want to speak because they are harming my people. They are white right. people. They did not suffer what my people did. I still have trauma today. My family was destroyed. My land was taken. I'm a victim of white Christian colonization. And those Halapus, they are beneficiaries of my suffering. So how do I, how do I get in touch with this judge and intervene as, as some kind of party to this process because I just cannot sit down and watch as white newfies come into my spaces, my native spaces, and take over as our white bosses. Do you know we have one native center in St. John's, Newfoundland? And when I was when I was growing up there and I moved to the city, I was 19 years old. I went to the native center. And do you know who was mostly at that native center? my people the inuit and the inu from labrador we had less than a thousand members and it was mostly transplanted real natives the way i see it there's no natives involved in any of this process i see uh white plaintiffs i see white defendants i see white lawyers for the plaintiffs white lawyers for the defendants i see a white judge and i see a white court system there's no native involvement in any of this stuff None. There are zero natives. It's unacceptable that in 2023 that I got to go compete with a white person for a job when equity was made because white people were abusing my people so badly. So they had to come up with a system of equity so that my people can have some doors open for us. Now that's being, those doors are being shut in our faces again because the white people are pretending to be us and coming into those spaces and taking those jobs. How infuriate. Listen, the Halapus have taken over that native center. These false Mi'kmaq, they're driving out the actual native people from the Friendship Center in St. John's. We have Inuit children in foster care in St. John's being sent down from Labrador. They're being put in white homes. Our children are still being stolen. And there's Inuit people at the Native Center giving cultural programs to our kids in those foster homes. And we have been driven out because the white pretendian Micmacs there are telling our people that we need to teach these white people our culture.
No, we don't. That's not our way. And so as you fight for these white newfies to become Micmac, the rest of us native people are doing our damnedest to cancel them. And I don't know how to do it. I don't know how I'm going to fight all you white people for my people. It's like we're in a constant war with this country for being abused over and over and over again. Do you know what it was growing up in Newfoundland as a visibly native person amongst all those white people? Do you know what torture that was? So I need to know from you, how do us native people have a voice in this trial? So, you know, regarding the, the Halibut Mi'kmaq class action, like I said, it really is about um, it alleging that the 2013 agreement was an unfairly uh, thing that did refuse some uh, some of those applications. Reply for Halibut band membership? No, but I should, because they're taking stuff from me, and I'm a real native woman. I should apply just so that I can prove to this country that you are making white people native. If you can take a white person and make them native with your white courts, you can take me, a real Inuk woman, and make me Mi'kmaq too. Why not? So I, I, can, underst I can understand and, and you know, I can only imagine uh, you know, the, the issues that you're facing, right? Like I, I can definitely understand and empathize with that. Um, you know, when it comes to this particular class action, like I said, it is really um, true for the Halibu Big Mi'kmaq band. Um, you know, it, that that is what our firm is. Um, you know, this is what you you're hired by them. I understand. This is white Christian colonialism and capitalism, and how it comes together to oppress real native people. So you must keep the capitalism machine going and making money, right? That's that's what it is. So how do we native people? intervene or have some kind of uh, way that have, we can have our voices heard in this to the judge. So I can mention to our lawyers that you would be willing to, you know, to speak with the lawyer if that, you know, comes here. So